guys, Urban Architect here, and welcome to another one of our mod tutorials. Where last week we covered Moveit, which is a mod that adds a lot of functionality in the way you can interact with objects from the base game, Procedural Objects essentially lets you modify those objects and creates an entirely new horizon in what you can build and what you can accomplish within this game. And I've chosen to cover procedural objects today at the request of a friend and patron of mine, Nelson Alvarado. And if you want to suggest video topics or enjoy any other of a large set of benefits, such as early access to my videos, or being able to vote on decisions within projects such as City Skylines Canada, I would recommend you check out my Patreon. Anyhow, let's get right into the tutorial. So this is the starting menu of procedural objects but isn't really where you can do the majority of things. Here you can check your layers, for example, where we to add this O to the layer decals and then hide decals. The O would be hidden and this is very useful uh, for a lot of situations. Exported objects allows you to import objects or selections that you've previously exported. Texture management lets you manage textures that you've taken from the workshop or made yourself or downloaded and font management is much the same except for fonts you can use within procedural objects text editor and the text editor is something which we'll cover in another video as today we're mainly going to be focusing on how you can use procedural objects to modify the shapes of things within your game and then there's statistics here are the procedural object statistics uh, for my save game within city skylines canada Anyhow, if you want to get directly to editing an object, you hit this little cross and we'll do the P today. So you can edit the object, which is really where you get all of your actual options to change the object, change its shape, change its size, change its rotation. You can move your object and we'll move it here and then we'll move it back. Uh, you can also set your objects layer for example as you already saw me do and if we were to use move it to move this way up and then go back to procedural objects we could go right here and we could use the align heights to align its height with the o you can delete your procedural object and it's worth noting that deleting a procedural object is not something you can go back from not even move it can undo uh, deleting a procedural object and you can change a procedural object's color much in the same way you can change a building's color with repaint. Anyhow, let's get right into the edit window, which is where procedural objects finds most of its power. So right here, you can edit the render distance of your object. For example, if we were to lower it to 50 meters, 50 meters past, the P disappears. Or you can set it very high for, say, a building or something you want to be seen from very far away on your map. You can export your object. You can text customize, which as I said, we'll cover in a later video. Or you can go right here to these two, which have a great deal of power. Additionally, when you have your object open, you have move to, which we've already covered. You can position your object along these axes. You click here, you can change it to scale so we can scale our RP, make it taller. And you can go into advanced edition tools and undo. You can rotate your object and of course all of this you can do with the keybinds listed here in addition and in advanced edition tools you can change the position of something and this is very useful if you're stacking objects on top of each other to make one building you can just copy and paste these numbers over you can snap an object to the ground you can flip its faces which I can't imagine ever needing to use you can undo or redo any actions and of course, right here, we could mirror our model. So if we go right here to X or say Z or Y. Now one worthwhile thing to note is, for example, if we notice that right here is in shadows, everywhere is in shadows, but when you mirror an object, the way the lighting ch changes on the side stays the same. So if this side were dark and we were to mirror the object, even though sunlight would be landing on it on this side, it would still be dark. Then you can stretch your model along any scale, like so. Or you can of course 
do the same and shrink it and that's along any of your other axes. And then of course there's customization which is most generally what you see with procedural objects. Advanced addition tools is very useful if you're just trying to resize a building because when you for example open customization on a building it's going to have a lot of vertices and it's very difficult to edit individual vertices when there are a bunch. And here on customization, you can select vertices. These are the corners and textures are stretched between vertices. And there's several things you can do here. First, you can just move your vertices and it's worth noting that your arrow keys actually work in, I think, north south grid instead of, for example, right here, I'm hitting the up arrow key but it's not going well away from me. Additionally, you can use your same three tools on your individual selection of vertices. So say we want to rotate these vertices, we can. Along those scales, we can scale them, right? So those same tools you were able to use on that first button, you can use here on your individual vertices. You can also flatten your selection. So all these vertices are on the same height. You can merge your vertices, which if you have something that's gonna be underground or anything, it's a great move to do so just to lower the performance impact. But of course it does mess up your shapes, mess up your textures a lot doing so. And addition, you can additionally, you can snap your selection to the ground. So all of these go down to the ground or you can snap each to ground. Right, so that does about cover all of the basic features for procedural objects. And you'll find that for 95% of what you do with procedural objects, these tools do cover it. And we can just undo everything we've done right here. Uh, and the text customization, I find it's most useful for making signs, especially for transit stops. But that does about wrap up our tutorial. I hope you found this useful. And if you have any questions on how to use procedural objects, of course, just drop them in the comments. And thank you for watching.